Here's how the gun debate typically goes in America. A mass shooting happens, some form of gun regulation is proposed, then the NRA and its supporters fire back with the Second Amendment. It seems like we've been in this gridlock forever, but believe it or not, there was a time when the NRA and the Republican Party actually supported gun control. And the reason? Had a lot to do with race. The Second Amendment wasn't originally intended to protect an individual's right to own guns. It was more about people's collective right to form militias and defend the nation. The gun laws of the time were written by and for white men, and they regulated logistics like how to sell, trade, or carry guns in public. But after the Civil War, when newly freed slaves obtained guns, southern states rushed to pass black codes to disarm black people and reaffirm white supremacy. Fast forward to the 1960s, when the Black Panther Party was created in Oakland, California. This group of radical activists believed in using violence as a form of self-defense to fight against racism. They would drive around the city with loaded guns to patrol the police. Now, at the time, open carry was legal in California. But that all changed on May 2, 1967, when 30 Black Panther members marched into the state capitol with loaded guns in hand to protest a gun control bill that would essentially end their police patrols. Their argument for armed resistance was simple but bold. The Second Amendment of the Constitution guarantees the citizen a right to bear arms on public property. Back then, the NRA and the Republican Party weren't exactly on board with that take. There is absolutely no reason why out on the street today a civilian should be carrying a loaded weapon. Barely two months later, Ronald Reagan, who was California's governor at the time, signed the very bill the Panthers protested into law and banned open carry in the state. The NRA supported that bill, as well as a federal gun control law that passed a year after, which restricted access to Saturday night specials, a type of cheaper, lower quality handgun popular among low-income black communities. While the NRA took credit for the law, critics said it was really aimed at controlling black people rather than controlling guns. But here comes the great irony. Even though these gun control laws were aimed at keeping down radical black activists, many white gun owners feared the government would also come after their guns. So in 1977, that fear led to a dramatic internal coup within the NRA. Almost overnight, the NRA went from being a bipartisan marksman's club to the hardline, powerful gun rights lobby we know today. The new NRA took up the Panthers' interpretation of the Second Amendment, saying that it guaranteed individual citizens' rights to own and bear arms. Meanwhile, faced with the rising tide of gun violence and crimes related to the growing crack cocaine epidemic in the 80s, the black community began to embrace gun regulations. By the early 90s, black Americans were more than three times more likely to die from gun violence than their white counterparts. And sadly, because of persisting issues like systemic racism, poverty, and the lack of educational resources, gun violence still disproportionately affects black communities today. Funerals have become our class family reunions. Facebook posts has become an update for, you know what, Chicago was just killed this weekend. The NRA, meanwhile, is using gun control's racist past to recruit black members. The modern gun control movement is just today's version of the exact policies used to keep firearms out of the hands of freed slaves after the Civil War. They, of course, conveniently leave out their own role in this racist history. And even though the NRA makes propaganda videos to appeal to black gun owners, the organization has come under fire for failing to speak up for them when their rights are under attack. Take the case of Philando Castillo, a law-abiding black gun owner who was shot dead by police during a traffic stop in 2016. The police just, he's, he's, he's covered, he killed my boyfriend, he's licensed, he's carried to, he's licensed to carry. The NRA put out a general statement supporting gun ownership that didn't even mention Castillo by name. This lukewarm response triggered outrage from the black community and even drew widespread criticism from the NRA's own members. Over the last 30 years, the face of the gun rights movement has changed from radical black activists to mostly white rural conservatives. But one thing has not changed. In practice, the freedom to bear arms is not so much a right as a privilege.